welcome to another edition of Spooky Reviews from Spooky Ventures. This one is our 104th review video. It's also a continuation of my efforts to put the spooky back into Christmas. This is a two for review though. Uh, I'm going to be looking at two Blu-rays from MVD Visual and those movies are Jack Frost and Jack Frost 2. This will be my last uh, holiday horror, or as I like to call it, ho-ho horror review for 2023, but you can bet I'll be revisiting that territory again next year. These two movies are definitely very different from one another. I should also mention, when I say Jack Frost, I'm not talking about the film with Michael Keaton. Uh, these are uh, indie films on the pure horror end of the spectrum. I say on the end of the spectrum rather than saying they're horror for an important reason that I'll get to shortly. First, let's look at the first Jack Frost movie. The film was released in 1997 and I have seen it billed as a comedy or horror comedy. I don't know if I agree with that kind of classification. The film definitely has a lot of humor built into it, but I think it tends to play more as a straight horror film than it does a horror comedy. I'd land it in the same territory as the first uh, Tremors movie in that regard. I should mention that the film is also the first appearance of actress uh, Shannon Elizabeth. The plot of the movie centers around a serial killer whose name is actually Jack Frost. Frost is being transported to his execution when snowy conditions lead to a crash with another vehicle. That vehicle is transporting some cutting-edge experimental chemicals for rearranging DNA. Frost gets hit with the full cargo of the chemicals and seems to melt into the snow. However, this concoction that was all over him causes his DNA to merge with the snow and he's resurrected as a being made of snow and ice. He has the ability to melt and refreeze at will. His new body gives him new opportunities to extend his career of killing. Conveniently, he's in the same town as the sheriff who caught him before his conviction, giving him the chance to exact revenge. The movie is low budget. It has some very silly elements at times. Uh, the effects leave a lot to be desired. Now, you can look at all those things as detriments, but honestly, I think there are charms here. There's something special about B-movies, and this definitely has whatever that special thing is. Now, this is not a full serious or dark horror film, but you sort of have to know that when you know the premise. It does have some definite tension and thrills, though. It's a fun movie. Next, let's look at Jack Frost 2, Revenge of the Mutant Killer Snowman. The movie came out three years after the first film, but it's supposed to take place just a year later. The tone is very different. Instead of a horror film with some comedy, this one is a full-on comedy movie that happens to also be a horror film. Imagine combining the overly sexualized humor of Porky's with the first Jack Frost movie and add in some gremlins and Police Academy insanity and you have the basic territory of this one mapped out. The thing is, it's a lot, of, a lot of fun as long as you can buy into the absurdity in different tone. One piece of absurdity at the core of the movie is that this time, rather than taking place in a snow-covered area, uh, Jack and company are on a d tropical island. Now, as with the first movie, this takes place at Christmas time but Christmas looks a lot different in the tropics than it does in the northern part of the United States. Of course, the craziness of a killer snowman on a tropical island is part of the stupid humor of the sequel. There are several returning characters from the first film, but some of them appear to have aged a lot more than you would expect in a year, or even in the three years since the first one came out. This has some inventive, if at times ridiculous, kills. The effects are at least as B quality as they were the first time around, but they do some much more ambitious things in this movie, so that is more pronounced. 
then again, with the more full comedy nature, that actually serves the film pretty well. The difference in tone makes the sequel seem a little jarring after the first movie, but they're both worthwhile as long as you take them as what they are, B-movies. These Blu-rays are both great packages. They come packed with intriguing bonus features. Um, the first movie includes the theatrical cut of the film, along with the uncut version. Now at the beginning of watching the uncut version, it's explained that the movie was rescanned from the master print, but that the master print of the cut scenes could not be found, so those scenes are from the best print they could find. I have to say, I was never pulled out of the movie enough to notice any difference in quality. So I can't imagine that the copy they had was that rough. The second one allows two options for viewing too, unfiltered and filtered. Now the deal there is that the movie was shot to video, but the movie company applied some kind of filtering to make it look more like a film production. I don't really think there is enough uh, difference to really notice between the two. So all in all, these are fun B-movies. They're definitely different films that provide completely different viewing experiences. Both are worth the time to watch though, and you'll find lots of goodies tucked in beyond the ones that I mentioned. Spooky Ventures is the home for spooky content and spooky merchandise on the web. Check it out today at SpookyVentures.com. And remember, always keep it spooky.